Peace and love, everybody. This is your brother, Judas Son, for Put It Out There TV. Hashtag P-I-O-T TV. Put it out there. You already know what it is. All right. So, um, I know some of y'all are going to be viewing this on Facebook. Some of you are going to be viewing this on YouTube. Some of you are going to be viewing this on the official Put It Out There TV website. Um, with that being said, for some of you, it's going to seem like I've been away for a while. Mostly you guys just on the uh, on YouTube, but um, for everybody else, I've I've been active. Um, so with that, also with that being said, if you want to stay up to date with what I have going on, what you need to do is go into the description, the caption, and or the comments of this video, depending on where you're viewing this at. And you need to click that very first link, which is going to be um, sending you to our website to subscribe to our email list. That way we are able to send you <coughs> notifications whenever we publish something online. All right, so let's get to it. So what's been going on, of course, I'm sure you are all aware, is that there has been some heat put, or should I say, DJ Vlad has been under fire. Better way to put it. DJ Vlad has been under fire. And this is due to the fact that he misquoted, as you all know, but for you, you who don't know, he misquoted um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan from one of his speeches that he had this summer. And basically, the context of the misquote... Um, presented a, a, a uh, it presented something that was in fact basically it it, it it put Farrakhan in a position to be hit with the anti-Semitic stick again right and Vlad had been advised of course that he had misinterpreted it and Vlad did in my honest opinion I know some of you may beat me up about this but in my honest opinion Vlad did what he needed to do which was make a retraction so he went and edited the video that he had on his channel where the, the, the uh, misquote was made. And then as well, he went on his social media profile on Twitter and stated that they do their best to be as accurate as possible. And, you know, they removed it or whatever the case may be. Something along those lines, right? So that's, a, that's a, an, an edit, a re-upload, and then a, uh, a retraction. That's what that is. And as a media company, I, I, in my honest opinion, you wouldn't expect more from that. I mean, I've, I've had a paper route as a little dude growing up. I've seen retractions in the, in the newspaper. I've seen retractions, um, in the magazines. I've seen the news channel make retractions before on TV, on television. So I've seen retractions and a lot of times, or most of the times, these retractions that they are making, they're making them because whatever previous information that they had put out was offensive it offended somebody and it wasn't fact and that's the same thing Vlad said something that offended someone and it wasn't based on fact it wasn't fact whatsoever at all right I'm supposed to run to the ATM but I didn't because I'm chopping it up with y'all folks um so Vlad made the retraction now, with the heat that Nick Cannon had been put under, or the heat that had been put under Nick Cannon, or the, whatever the case, y'all know what I'm saying, for his uh, so-called anti-Semitic statements, people feel like Vlad should go and Vlad should apologize to the minister, Louis Farrakhan. Um, but in my honest opinion, I feel like what he did was good enough. He made the retraction, he made the edit. To me, that, that, that's good enough. Um... But on the other hand, because I, I try to be objective, I also thought, what if Vlad purposely misquoted, purposely placed the statement of the Honorable Louis Minister Farrakhan into the wrong context so that he could manipulate a, an interview out of him? This is something that I, a, a conclusion that I had came to, not a final conclusion, but it's just something that I, you know, just a possibility that I thought it could be. Because I've heard him say on other videos and interviews that he's tried to get the minister Louis Farrakhan on an interview. So 
it's uh, the reason why I say I assume he, he was mis, uh, misquoting on purpose to manipulate it was because he was saying the only way that he is going to apologize, as you all should know, if you don't, I'm telling you now, is if he can apologize face to face. Now, um, Lord Jamar and Godfrey, who are probably two of the most frequented guests on the Vlad TV YouTube channel and possibly the website. Um, they said in all fairness, that's, you know, where Vlad was going. He just wanted to do a face to face or, or at least that's what Godfrey was leaning towards. So I can't say for sure that Vlad wanted to do a, a, an interview, you know, that from what Godfrey was saying, Vlad was fine, even if it was just over the phone or, you know, if they wanted to use their cameras, if they wanted to use cameras or whatever the case may be. Right. Now, fast forward to Lord Jamar and Godfrey calling for the boycott of DJ Vlad, right? I'm on code. You know, I'm on code. I rock with it. I went and subscribed from DJ Vlad. And really, I felt like I was forced to resubscribe to DJ Vlad because I've already come to these conclusions about DJ Vlad in the first place. But I felt like I was forced to resubscribe to DJ Vlad for the simple fact that even when I unsubscribed from his channel the first time and his videos would pop up in our feed and I would say not interested, his videos will still pop up directly after the video of someone else who may be in the same niche as him. And this would happen often. But it's like when you watch Vlad's videos, his videos would go straight to his videos directly after. There was no going to know uh, DJ Small Eyes and there was no going to know Drink Champs directly after. And there wasn't going to know no DJ Academics directly after. No, this went from Vlad video to Vlad video. But when it comes to other people who was in the same niche, it's like you were getting sent directly to Vlad's videos after we're watching somebody else's video. It's, I wasn't feeling that. And plus as well, I didn't care for Vlad's line of questioning because it seemed like a skilled, tactful, yet sneaky uh, way of asking FBI, police, law enforcement style questions. And it would bother me to the point that I could actually feel it in my gut. That's how much I didn't like it. So I unsubscribed from the channel. But like I said, they kept lambasting me with Vlad. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to go ahead and and resubscribe. I'm like, and plus, you know, I like some of the people that he's putting on the channel. So fuck it. I'm, I'm going to resubscribe. Right now with this Vlad, uh, with this, uh, you know, Godfrey and Lord Jamar thing, I've gone ahead and I've, um, and I've unsubscribed from the channel, right? Skipping videos, you know, if I have control over it. Because like I said, I could watch a video and it'll send me directly to a Vlad video. So outside of that, I'm not watching Vlad videos or, or even giving it an along amount. As soon as I hear that, you know, that little trademark sound that he has at the beginning, you might get about 15, 20 seconds in. Or if I'm zoned out, you might get a few minutes in. But I'm once I catch what's going on, I'm, I'm changing the channel. So... Since this boycott, Vlad has lost 20,000 YouTube subscribers on the Vlad TV YouTube channel. And I know this for a fact because when I went to unsubscribe this last time, which was just 48 hours ago, right? <clears throat> Vlad had 4.28 million subscribers on the Vlad, Vlad YouTube channel. Look, I'm over here. As bad as a uh, crunchy black or country black. Is that his name? The brother from Three Six Mafia. He called him Glad. I'm calling him Blad. But yeah, so the Vlad TV YouTube channel had 4.26 or 4.28 million subscribers, right? So I go back and check again, just being curious. And now he's at 4.26 million subscribers. So for those those who don't know. 4.28 million is 4,280,000. 4.26 million is 4,260,000. So Vlad has lost a total of 20,000 YouTube subscribers and possibly counting. The reason why I say possibly counting because um, Lord Jamar and Godfrey are not the only ones who have spoken out again on this. Now, Lord Jamar and Godfrey, you know, respectfully, they've said what they had to say. 
and they've gone on about their business. They, you know, they're moving on to different topics. So respect to them because they're not going to make a spectacle about this. They said what they said and maybe they'll come back and address it at a later time. But there are other YouTubers who are a part um, or YouTubers and content creators on other platforms who are a part of the so-called black community and for those who are in the knowledge itself you already know what i mean i have to make sure i'm addressing us as um as a whole um to make sure that i'm not leaving any of us out but you know what i mean you know we moors i know we moors i know we're not negro black colored african-american or any of those brand names that were placed on us by european christian slaveholders i already know that i'm well aware of that um but there are other content creators and youtube youtubers right who are members of the so-called black community, our brothers and sisters who are continually speaking on this after Lord Jamar and Godfrey have said what they've had to say. There are content creators constantly speaking on it. I mean, you even have um, uh, Tommy Sotomayor. Peace and love to the brother. I know everybody doesn't. I know he's not everybody's cup of tea, but he is a big YouTuber, a big content creator um gets lots of views 30 40 thousand views in a day people are donating big money to him so he has a following you know i've seen the brother make 15 17 eighteen hundred dollars in just a few hours just going live on youtube you know what i mean so he has a following so the people that are part of the so-called black community that's speaking you know that 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 follows him they they're going to be unsubscribing right you're going to have so-called white people that are not going to agree with what vlad has done they're going to be unsubscribing you know just trying to show that they're down with the cause but for us as so-called black people so-called black people though i know we're moors different moorish families whether you know moabites ammonites israelites whatever the case may be we got to keep cold we have to keep cold so we're gonna have to ride it out we're gonna have to cut vlad off it is what it is obviously some of our brothers and sisters are offended and far be it from me on this particular subject matter, far be it from me to try to analyze and speculate and be so objective that I'm going against my people. You know what I mean? And like, you know, like Lord Jamar said, this is the best time to practice unity right now. And the thing is, with all these other nations across the earth, all these other people are part of the human family, you know, they may not get along on every subject matter. They may not even be friends, but there's certain versions of stories and context of stories that they agree on so that it works for their earthly salvation, even though it may not be to our benefit, it's to our detriment. But there's certain lies and things in history that we know are lies. They know our lies, but they agree with them. You're all right. They agree with them. They write them in his so-called history books and they teach it to the world and they teach it to us and we just go along. But so with that being said, we need to be on code too. you know, whether this 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 boycott is uh, based on emotion or whatever the case may be. I'm rocking with it and there's 20,000 other people rocking with it. And as I'm doing this right now, um. There may be uh, uh, others that's unsubscribing as we speak. So I just want to let y'all know the boycott power is working. We have it uh, just like, uh, you know, the brother uh, Royce to five nine, as he said, even though I haven't agreed with everything with him on on certain occasions. But the brother said we are the game. That's the thing. You know what I mean? We are the game. They can't. There is no game without us. We are the game. You can't play chess without the king and the queen on the, um, starting out the game. All right. You, it's just what it is. Like we are the game. We are the, 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 the uh, cornerstones that they rejected. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. The stone that the builders refuse. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. So it is what it is. We got to stop letting these people eat up, eat off of us like that. Make tables off of our backs and our bellies and make chairs and tables out of us. You know what I mean? Sitting on our backs, eating off our backs. Can't keep allowing them to do that, man. It's the 21st century. It's too much Internet. It's too much technology for that. And I really think it's time for us to uh, start putting up some great walls of China, proverbially, if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, I'm up out of here. This is your brother, Judah Sun. For Put It Out There TV, I appreciate you allowing me to take up so much of your very valuable time. Um, 
please make sure that you head on over to the Put It Out There TV website. You can go to putitoutthertv.com. That's P-U-T-I-T-O-U-T-T-H-E-R-E-T-V.com. And go on over there, man. We got um and subscribe. You'll see the form or you can go in the description. You know what I mean? I, I need y'all to get over there. We're trying to be independent and not let these people eat off of us like that. It is what it is. I'm about to hear one.